Hello YouTube. Uh, I'm going to be starting a chemistry uh, playlist as well for some tutorials. Um, I've been doing chemistry for the longest time, but I've never actually sat down and made a tutorial. I figured I should just start, so I'm just starting uh, randomly on solutions and physical properties. So this video is going to have a few example problems I found in a book um, for solubility of gases, um, solubility, molality, and molarity kind of problems. Just thought we could start here because um, we're kind of in the middle of the school year, so those of you might be studying this right now. So, all right. What's going on here? Okay, so first question. Uh, which of the following do you expect to be the most water-soluble, and why? Well, remember, key thing when you're de dealing with solubility is the fact that like dissolves like. Now, you probably heard that in lecture or in... Um, class, but what does that really mean? Well, it just means similar substances dissolve with other similar substances. So water dissolves with uh, properties that um, are, are similar to water. Uh, if you have covalent compounds, then they dissolve with similarly with covalent compounds. So which is more so salt most soluble for water? Well, it's what's most like water? It would have to be NH2OH. Um, and that the reason being, uh, again, this idea of likes dissolve like, but if you were to put these two in solution, you would have NH2OH, and you'd have the water molecules. Now, what forms them, or what forms between those molecules, are hydrogen bonds represented by blue, um, and that's uh, it, that's how you show that they are compatible or soluble with one another. Cool. All right. So now we have a next problem: a 30% mass by mass solution of nitric acid in water has a density of 1.818 grams per centimeter cubed at 20 degrees Celsius. What is the molarity of the weak acid? Actually, it's nitric acid, so never mind. Um, of the solution. So you have you assume a 100 gram sample to make math and life easier. Um, so you have a 100 grams or a 100 gram sample and it's 30 percent of nitric acid by mass. So that means you would have 30 grams. Then you use the molar mass, and you would get the number of moles. Remember, molarity is uh, moles over liters, so moles over liters of solution. So here's your moles, and now we got to find how much of the solution we have. Well, we're given the density of water, and we assumed a 100 gram sample, so we're going to have that 100 gram solution, and the density of the solution is 1.18 grams per centimeter cubed. Now we want this in liters, so you can do a small conversion or quick conversion, I should say. Um, remember, one centimeter cubed is equal to a one milliliter, and 1,000 milliliters are in a liter, and you get 0.0847 liters, or 8.47 milliliters. But make sure when you do your molarity calculation, moles of, sol moles of solute over liters of solution, you use the appropriate values in units, and you'll get 5.6 molar. Okay, what is the molarity, molality, excuse me, of dichlorobenzene, paradichlorobenzene, in a solution prepared by dissolving 2.65 grams um, of it in 50 milliliters of benzene. Okay, so molality is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. And if you start with what we're given, 2.65 grams, uh, use the molar mass, you'll get the moles of the solute. Um, now it says it's dissolved in 50 milliliters of benzene, which is our solvent. So you use that conversion uh, that we're given and the density. So we have milliliters and we're trying to get to grams, or in this case kilograms. So first we convert to grams using the density I was given. So 50 milliliters times the density. The, gram the milliliters cancel, but now we want to convert it to kilograms. So we do that by 1,000 kilograms in one, excuse me, 1,000 grams in one kilogram. And then we get the amount of kilograms in solvent. Simply divide those two and you'll get your molality. Now molality is represented by lowercase m. Okay, so another one. Calculate the mole fraction of the solute in the following aqueous solutions. 21.7% by mass and a 0.684 molar, which is urea. So we'll assume a 100 gram sample since it is by mass. Uh, for the first thing, and we're looking for the mole fraction. So that's just the, a number of moles you get. So let's look for moles. We use the molar mass of the solution, or of the compound, um, and we get that many moles, but we need, want to know what the total moles are. So since we assumed a 100 gram sample, and 21.7% of it, of the solution is CH3CH2OH, 
um, then the other percentage, 70.8%, is the remainder. It could be water, for example. So we'll assume a 100 gram sample, and it uh, it is water since it's aqueous, so dissolved in water. So that's kind of a tricky one. You have to make a double assumption sort of there. Not really, but sort of. You have to use deductive reasoning to get that other percentage um, and know that it's water to get the moles of that as well. So you get that many moles of water, and then you simply have the moles of the first part here, which is at the top, over the total, so you have to add those two together and divide by that. Um, oh, I don't think I added them on the thing there, but you should get about 0.1 uh, regardless. So under uh, oxygen gas pressure of 1 atm, 28.3 milliliters of uh, oxygen gas dissolves in 1 liter of water at 25 degrees Celsius. What is the molarity of oxygen in the saturated solution at 25 degrees Celsius when, osmo pre when uh, oxygen gas pressure is 3.86 atm? Assume it vein remains constant at 1 liter. So first use the ideal gas law since we are dealing with oxygen gas. And we're looking for number of moles first because we're dealing with molarity, moles of solute over liter solution. So this implies that the uh, you're pretty much manipulating the equation. Uh, use what you have there. Make sure that you convert 28.31 milliliters into liters. Um, and temperature add 273 to convert to Kelvin. Um, then you get that many moles of oxygen gas, and it's over a one liter solution. So that means we have our molarity of in one liter solution of water at one atm, if you notice, because the oxygen gas was at this pressure. So that will be the key here for this next step. Because this is at one atm, but we're looking for the pressure at three point eight six atm. So if we have this much, or uh, if this is the concentration of oxygen gas at one atm. If we want to find it at, at 3.86 atm, you simply multiply that, and you will get your new concentration at that new pressure. And that's it. Hope this helped.